What's happening, people? Back with another reaction, back with some more regular music, which is to say, you know, if you were following my old channel or if you've already started following this one, you'll know that most of the reactions that I do, and indeed most of the videos that I post are either mixes of techno music or hardcore or goa trance and so on, I'm very much into electronic music, but I do also talk punk rock, hip hop, reggae, classical music, and so on. Uh, one genre that is particularly sort of, and it's sort of a suite, a range of interrelated genres, um, that I'm very fond of and will always be very nostalgic to me is 80s music because I was born in the year 1980. I am now 41 years old, turned 42 later uh, this year. So my single digit years, uh, I've mentioned before, my household was very musically diverse when I was growing up. My dad listened to classical music and some like, like, uh, whatchamacallit, like blues and stuff like that. My mom and my sister were listening to synth pop um, and a lot of what we would now call 80s music, although again, you know, some of that is rock music, some of it is what we now call like early electro, and again, some of it is pop, like synth pop, but uh, we'll get to that. Uh, and then my brother was listening to like classical rock, and then a few years later in my early teens, he introduced me to electronic music, and the rest, as they say, is history. That's why DJ Schnoots exists. But, uh, like I said, 80s music always will hold a very special place in my heart, in particular synth pop. You can maybe see over there, I've got some Depeche Mode albums, I listened to them from the time I was a kid, I'm still a huge fan, um, including all the sort of iterations of their styles as they've, you know, progressed and evolved as a group. Um, I'm f uh, fond of, like, Duran Duran and Erasure and Yaz and a number of other bands that had that early 80s synth pop sound in one form or another. Although, again, someone like Duran Duran, their music could be considered rock, certainly some of their later stuff, um, like, you know, Come Undone and tracks like that. So, that's a lot of setup, but the bottom line is I'm a huge 80s guy, um, even though it's not a genre that I have extensive vinyl in. I'd say I have 30 to 40 records um, in the 80s, uh, sort of general related uh, suite of genres, um, but uh, the ones I have, many of them, are very classic. And if you know this uh, record, then you know exactly what you're looking at the moment you see this. Uh, this is Blue Monday by New Order, um, an incredibly famous dance track, and rightly so. Uh, let's just get right to it. Like I said, um, this is, what year does it show? It's early 80s for sure. I'm going to look it up in a second, but yeah, let's just get right to it. This is Blue Monday by New Order, early 80s, and I shall check exactly the year. Oh, hello. and it's on factory records. Although, actually, the version I have is a repress from 85 on Quest Records. Quest spelled Q-W-E-S-T. Wait for that bass line. You're all waiting for it. Y'all know. Hey. On my old channel, which looks just like this, same logo, same banner. Um, I got locked out of it because I lost access to the email it was related to. Whatever. The point is, uh, I did an 80s club night DJ mix. You can still go see it on my old channel, Matthew Snyder. Uh, but yeah, 80s club night, and I used this as the opener. Love how it cleans up there. Like those 
But it's a sort of a, a mixture of more general sentiments that I think many people can easily identify with, or at least many people who have been through certain types of relationships might they might resonate with them. Uh, but it's it, it's mixed with lines that are of a much more specific nature, like he's going down to the beach and so on. So there's like it's this, um, and again, I think that's good songwriting. It's a, you know it means something specific to the the author the songwriter but it also can be applied in other contexts and people can sort of take away from it what they feel which i talked about it before again in a lot of videos on my channel which stopped existing two days ago and when i started this new one but i've talked about a lot of my uh, old videos about you know whether we're talking techno which is you know i think where most of these conversations have taken place but there's this sort of interaction, a dialogue between producer or you know musician or instrumentalist more generally uh, and listener <clears throat> or fan, and you know while again uh, a composer, a songwriter can have very specific meanings that are personal to them or that at least like have particular like semantic contours. Um, you know, the people who listen, they might appreciate that, that they might learn and read about, you know, how this song was written and, you know, where the songwriter was in their life when it came out. Um, but they will also take it and sort of apply it to their own experiences, their own understandings, and indeed their own life. Um, so again, I, I think that's good songwriting when you blend the sort of general sentiments that people will really tap into them. Uh, but you're also intermixing it with things that you know may relate to the specific incident that inspired you or motivated you, or maybe it's not an incident. Maybe it was a theme that was kind of running through your head for a while, and you just started to put things on paper and remember certain like experiences that you had. So, like I said, I really like uh, credit the songwriting. I think most people, when they think about this track, they think about that bass line. They think about the the triple hit like before he breaks into the vocal sections. Um, but I think the the lyrics themselves are definitely very interesting. Shout out to New Order. You're like, stop Gavin, play the track. I do like those bass and like, again, synth form sort of flare ups. A 
cavalcade of interesting sonic elements. Some of them seeming like one-off and almost like removed from the rhythmic structure or at least like adjacent to it. Those snare attacks. The kick rolls. Again, I talked about it on old videos on my other channel, but I think I was primed to start liking trance and techno when my brother sort of introduced me to it in the like mid-90s because I had spent at that point roughly a decade listening to music made by drum machines and synthesizers and so on. So again, like, you know, my journey is my own and may not relate to exactly how other people found different styles of music, but I do believe I was ready to like techno and trance because of the music I had listened to before, including tracks like this. Taking his time this one, like, it has a sonic story to tell beyond the lyrics, and it's going to take its time telling it. And one final point, like, really quickly before we let the the track end, the dynamic nature of the track, like, it, you know, it has that long sort of anticipatory sort of suspenseful intro, then it does that triple pop, and he comes in, and he's singing, it's really dynamic, and then sort of... Like, some of the elements dropped out, then some of them came back in, and then it did that, like, really stripped out section leading back into the second verse. Then we had this long instrumental, it's not even an outro, it's just like an interlude, this long, like, instrumental interlude. And during it, you know, drum parts have come out and come back in. There's, like, as I mentioned, these sort of one-off, like, sounds at the end of measures that just sort of, like, add to the atmosphere. It's a really dynamic, like, changing track. It's not just, like you know, a simple sort of kick drum structure with a bass line, you know, a couple of sung lyrics, and then it just does like a volume lowering outro. It's like a really like complex track in terms of its layout. <laughs> talk on uh, my old channel like the regular music reactions I have a playlist I started one here obviously but uh, if you go see some of those old videos you hear me talk about um, I think you know write an end to the track if possible and maybe it's you know the label is like oh you only have this much space and like whatever but I feel like if there's some sort of proper end whether it's you know a cymbal smash and a like slow fade or like whatever um, it's just weird to me when you get that what we heard here and you know in other tracks this is you know by no means is this unique to this release I think a lot of 80s tracks are like this but you know you, you release an album I feel like write an end to the song musically so that like it's not literally like you're just turning down the volume and like the band is still playing which feels weird and I get it like maybe when they did live performances you know they often would do a medley into something else or you know maybe the point is oh this could just keep going it's a story that never ends we just choose to end it after seven eight minutes whatever um, but yeah, it's a minor criticism. I would just say it would have been cooler to me if you had like an unwinding, a little bit more dismantling, maybe just that sort of kick that we came in with, and then, you know, like a, a cymbal crash, and then shh, or whatever. So, you know, like I said, it's a minor criticism, and I really do love that track. Um, but yeah, it just seems like they could have done something a little more, like, you know, finite and definitive at the end. Uh, nevertheless, like I said, I was really impressed by the lyrics. I was sort of keying in on them a little bit more than I have in the past, although, like I said, um, there's a couple lines that have always made me laugh in terms of, you know, even when I was a kid, they struck me as funny, and then as I got older, you know, started to date women, it was like, oh, you know, I've, I've felt in a relationship before where it's like almost like the other person, you must know how I feel more than I do. So it's like as an adult, hearing a couple of those lines make me laugh. Um, nevertheless, let me know what you thought about the tune. Let me know if you're a big fan. Um, if you're new here, please do subscribe. There's lots of content coming out. Most of it you will see so far is like techno and trance and so on. But my musical taste 
bass are vast and diverse, as you can see. Um, I'm big into punk rock, and there's some hip hop over there, and over there, and synth pop, as I mentioned. Um, so there's gonna be all sorts of stuff here, and I'm a big classical guy. So honestly, if you're a music lover of one kind or another, whether it's you know rock and techno or hardcore or like um, you know. Uh, old school 80s muckraking punk rock or whatever. Um, I got a lot of stuff going on here, so please do uh, check in on more videos because there will be plenty of content. Anyway, have a good day, have a good night. I'll see you next time. Peace.